Hey there. This week I got to destroy the 8080 walker that I made last week. I had a lot of fun with it because it was way less labor intensive for me instead of the cutting and the building and all that sort of stuff that I struggle with normally. This was worth all the work of doing that. And next week I'm going to put up a video of doing the base for the diorama. I'm going to have this standing you know, in a riverbed and there's going to be a whole sort of storyline with it that I don't want to I don't want to ruin by letting you know just yet but I'm really excited to do this so it, it's it's just it gets fun when the the hard work is over so yeah this is going to be it's going to be one of my better builds I think so yeah I hope you get something out of it and I hope you enjoy the video I used a couple of strips of cardboard to make the bands around the neck and while I waited for them to dry I started dissecting the AT-80. I made sure that I replaced the blade on this craft knife so I didn't have any issues with taking very clean pieces out of this. It was double thick because it has the foam core board underneath this first layer of XPS foam. I evened it out with a skewer because, as usual, <laughs> I got it wrong. I used the skewer to make a light impression where I wanted to have a sort of a guide of where I was going to cut. I didn't want to make a permanent mark with a pencil or a pen, so I just thought I'd have a go with this. But I only did it once or twice and I just started cutting like a maniac because it, I don't know, it just kind of worked out quite easily on its own, this sort of thing. I used the skewer again to sort of smooth around a little bit but I didn't do this much because I really do want it to look like rusted steel. I started cutting away in sections that were sort of large and then pieces that were angular and adjacent to each other just to try and keep a balance even though it looks sort of random and, and chaotic there's definitely a balance of the holes and try and have some on either side across from each other so you can see directly through the piece. I had to cut away the foam core board, it was just a little too thick. Just so you can't see that double thickness from the outside. The smaller holes I, you know, I was really rough with it. Like delicate because it's foam but I, I just twisted the knife into it and scratched around the holes and removed some of that layer of paint and a little of the of the foam. You have to be probably a little bit mindful when you're doing this. It's one of those jobs that you can get really stuck into it and snap out of it half an hour later and realize there's nothing but a big pile of holes on a bit of foam. It was just really fun and relaxing and yeah, I just kept making holes and making holes and <laughs> yeah, lucky I didn't space out too much. I really want it to look like it's been under attack. It looks good. I'm going to take off one of the legs and I decided to take off the front leg that it's got the angle on it that I'm just not quite happy with. It just looks like it may be going backward or, or something. So I thought I would just take that one off for that reason. All right, time to operate. Scalpel, please, nurse. This probably seems a bit erratic to people, but uh, I really do want it to look like it's been sitting around for generations rusting and falling apart. It made sense at the time. <laughs> I'm still struggling to get it to stand but I will fix that in the next segment. Now I'm going to darken all the exposed foam up and all the inside of it as well with a, a watered down acrylic wash of black and brown. 
and that's it after it. It just, once again, soaks it all up so easily, so quickly. Gets into every little part of the foam. It's great. Makes it all dirty again as well. You can see it's sort of like it's almost uh, like a, a water wash. And I'm also going to put this grey on again because I'm just going to clean it up a little bit before I start to dirty it up again. That is a weird yo-yoing thing going on. I'm just having a look at now, really, but it seems to work, so that's what I do. Once again, another rough coat. I want to be able to see through this. You can see the like watermarks of the very light wash that I put on, and I want that to be exposed because it looks natural. Time to start putting down some rust. I just used uh, black and brown and some water and just made variations of the same two together. So I'd have some slightly darker and some slightly lighter brown I, I just I want to go from darkest to lightest and then just layer it up in that way I did this dark brown almost everywhere on this just to give it that really rusted look and I use the brush strokes in the direction of what would seemingly be gravity pulling water down over time. I didn't realize how much surface area there was on this until I started doing this job. I just kept turning it around and there'd be another side and I thought I'd finished and nope, there's a top and a bottom and the legs. It was, it was quite a lot of painting. I'm using just that brown now, the plain brown. It's a burnt umber and I'm just going to lay it a little heavier now so it's less of, of a, a, a wash and more of just a thicker rust look you can see the difference of that without the black in it it's quite a lot lighter and pull everything down now I'm just going to use a burnt sienna For each colour as I go deeper into the rust, I use less and less of it. You don't want just layering up the same colour on top of itself. I use a toothpick to put it down as well. I don't want perfection, I want it to look random and rough. And I use my fingers as always because they're a great smoothing tool and they're a great eraser as well. This is a really simple technique, but it looks really good. And I love the way it comes out on the foam because the foam keeps soaking it up no matter how many layers I seem to put on. Same thing with the legs, but uh, it was a little rougher. Make sure you try and go in the direction of the legs going straight down. Imagine it standing up and then painting in the direction the, run, the rust would have run. Or if it, was, if it was laying down on a diorama, you would have it obviously going in a different direction. But just be mindful of nature when you're trying to recreate it. You wouldn't have it going down the shape of an L shape of the leg. You would have it going directly down. So always think of these little things that will keep your work looking realistic and natural. I've got some really fine flocking that I made from sawdust and I sieved it about three times just to get almost what's like a powder. And I put it sort of randomly on areas where grass might grow. I'm going to put static grass on top of it, but I like that extra layer of depth. It looks like foliage. It could be even clover or anything. You don't want to just go laying static grass down on something because it looks strange. I put it on the feet as well. 
I just used a clear acrylic glue or water-based glue and then lightly garnished it. <laughs> I'm very sparing because I want it to be uneven. I don't want even layers of, of anything. I put it on anywhere that it would have be sitting, just little recesses and things. And this is just to have um, pieces exposed from the leg. I used some pieces of wire and a skewer to push outside of the, uh, the leg. I just used Sharpies to colour them, a black and a copper one, to give it the look of rusted metal. Just the little fine details that really make things look really nice. Very, very simple. These guns that I made, one's made out of a bit of dowel. I just ran the end around on a file and stained it and put a bit of rust on it. Made it to the right length and popped it under there. And the top one is made out of a toothpick. They look effective. They really do just stained them up and painted them a little bit and cut them to the right length and put them on and you know if you didn't do things like make videos and tell people what you actually did they wouldn't know how you made it so be brave enough to use everyday objects because they work really really well I'm going to put the grass down now it's one of my favorite jobs when I'm not electrocuting myself with it. I haven't done that in ages, so fingers crossed I didn't just jinx it. If you never hear from me again, you'll know what happened. I'm again sporadically placing the glue. I want it in little bits and pieces here and there, so it's natural. I chuck the nail in a place where no one would see the hole. Not that there's a worry about holes in the thing. And then I just uh, earthed it and yeah, I would normally do this a little bit closer, but because it's on camera, uh, you wouldn't be able to see it if I did it closer. But after this, I just lowered just that bit more, and then it pulls itself back up nice and and high. It's so easy. I love the static grass. It's one of the best things. That looks beautiful. It looks like a little living animal now which i do love about AT-ATs. they just yeah they really come to life i made sure to put static grass all over the feet as well just in the right places where it might be growing and that's the destruction of the AT-80. -AT. i really am very happy with how it's come out it's just got a beautiful look about it and the the reds and the green and it's just yeah it looks alive which i really like I hope you did get something from this and I look forward to seeing you next time.